Wednesday, February 12th, 2020. I'm sorry. It was an emergency. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, we do. Sorry. <laughs> Thought you were sick. <laughs> no, that's the wife. I'll probably be next. <laughs> so I'm not touching nothing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Father God, we just want to we just want to give you all the honor and glory this morning. To go this, this morning, Lord, as we come together, Lord, we just ask that you come into this room, Lord. You fill us with your holy presence, Lord, as we as as our our com- county leaders and, and those that are concerned with the things that are going on in this county, Lord, discuss the matters at hand, Lord. And we just ask that. You come upon them, Lord, and, and you lead them in the right direction that they can be good stewards of your of your people here in Erie County, Lord. And we just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. And we get this done in a timely manner. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I was doing really good this year, too. I was actually early. Uh, Thanks, Kevin. Well, I'll see you guys next time. You Thanks. guys appreciate it. Be good. Um, we do have some uh, some numbers on one of our revenue sources, uh, lodging tax. Oh, good. Uh, for February. Um, I mean, they're very good, but I think there's, you know, some other issues probably going on that are influencing that. So, again, what we've got or received in February is essentially from the, the last quarter of 19. Okay. Because they are on like more of a quarterly reporting basis. We have a very few monthlies compared to we used to get a lot of monthlies, but that's changed now with their new reporting system. You mean because they're quarterly? Yeah. But February, January. So no, so like what was re- receded in and shown and f- posted for February would have probably been October, November, December. Two months? Three months. January, February. Quarter, three months. January, February. No. Two months. No. Because then they get, after the end of the reporting period, they still have like 30 days to turn in. So it's behind kind of like sales oh, tax. Okay. Not quite that far. Okay. All right. So there's a little bit of a timing thing here, but just a hair under 24% through two months of this year. 24%? Yeah. Of up. Up? Yeah. Compared to last year? Compared to last year in February. 2019 so which leading to really believe really one thing we we know we had good sales tax numbers for October mm-hmm. okay um, and I'm thinking what's mixed in with there is, is probably some late payers as well from the third quarter but it's early in the year we'll see So, February to February from last year, when we look at that, well, yeah, I guess the confusion is the yeah, switching from the, monthly to quarterly, yes. or quarterly to monthly, back and forth. Yeah. Huh. Mm. Well. So, I, I, I the, the timing issue is still kind of bleeding out, so. When will it stop bleeding out? Oh, for sure, by through next year, for sure. And it's, okay. it should be okay from from here on out, though, too. But if you get a, if you had some late payers, that would influence it as well. I don't think I'm assuming that's probably part of it. Well, should we bring up about the meeting that we had with Mr. Jeffries and the, that he agreed? Do the okay. okay. All right. And there, there's some legislation we've been working on for a while with the the Cedar Fair, uh, some amendments to our uh, ground lease and, and lease on the indoor sports park. Uh, we've got those ironed out, and those are going through today too. That was basically regarding doing. Uh, 
easements and that type of thing mm -hmm. on the properties. And that it's been okay. It's, you know, it's uh, essentially it's, it's it, you know one of the main things is paving the way for the for the third phase of the project, which is the landings project. Yeah. So. And our attorney looked at it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's all I have. That's all the issues. Yep. Okay, nine forty-five. I guess the bid opening is now. You know, I I read that letter from the Sandal Company. Are they out there? Yeah, that clock's fast again, according to mine. You want to do some resolutions while we're waiting? Um. Yeah. Motion just a motion. To levy. Uh, motion to not place a levy on the tax duplicate for ditch maintenance assessments. Second. Mr. Schaffner. Yes. Mr. Ulrich. Yes. Mr. Schentzel. Yes. Uh, motion to approve the minutes of the January 9th, 13th, 22nd, and 30th meetings. Second. Mr. Schaffner. Yes. Mr. Ulrich. Yes. Mr. Schentzel. Move yes. for Move for adoption resolution of the Board of Commissioners for the purpose of declaring certain Erie County equipment surplus and ordering same to be sold by internet auction. Second. Mr. Schaffner? Yes. Mr. Ulrich? Yes. Mr. Schenegal? Yes. Move for adoption resolution of the Board of Commissioners for the purpose of declaring certain items surplus and ordering same to be discarded or salvaged. Second. Mr. Schaffner? Yes. Mr. Ulrich? Yes. Mr. Schenegal? Yes. Move for adoption resolution of Board of Commissioners for the purpose of entering into an agreement with U.S. Bank Equipment Finance. Second. Mr. Schaffner? Yes. Mr. Ulrich? Yes. Mr. Shenigo? Yes. Move for adoption resolution of Board of Commissioners for the purpose of entering into the First Amendment to the Phase 2 ground lease agreement with Cedar Point Park, LLC. Second. Mr. Schaffner? Yes. Mr. Ulrich? Yes. Mr. Shenigo? Yes. Move for adoption resolution of the Board of Commissioners for the purpose of entering into the First Amendment to the Phase 2 lease and conveyance agreement with Cedar Point Park, LLC. Second. Mr. Schaffner? Yes. Mr. Ulrich? Yes. Mr. Shenigal? Yes. Move for adoption resolution of the Board of Commissioners for the purpose of authorizing payment to Marie B. Fresh and Associates for services provided to the Erie County Municipal Court. Second. Mr. Schaffner? Yes. Mr. Ulrich? Yes. Mr. Shenigal? Yes. Move for adoption resolution of the Board of Commissioners for the purpose of authorizing payment to Firelands Corporate Health Center for supplies provided to the Title Office. Second. Mr. Schaffner? Yes. Mr. Ulrich? Yes. Mr. Shenigal? Yes. Move for adoption resolution of the Board of Commissioners for the purpose of entering into an agreement with the Erie County Sheriff. Second. Mr. Schaffner? Yes. Mr. Ulrich? Yes. Mr. Shenigal? Yes. Move for adoption resolution of the Board of Commissioners for the purpose of authorizing payment to precision body and frame for supplies provided to the Department of Environmental Services. Second. Mr. Schaffner? Yes. Mr. Ulrich? Yes. Mr. Shenigal? Yes. Would you wait here? Do one more. Do one more. Move. Okay. Move for adoption resolution of the Board of Commissioners for the purpose of entering into a memorandum of understanding with Firelands Habitat for Humanity. Second. Yes. Mr. Ulrich? Yes. Mr. Shenigo? Yes. Move for adoption resolution of the Board of Commissioners for the purpose of entering into a grant agreement with the Ohio Environmental Protection Agency. Second. Mr. Schaffner? Yes. Mr. Ulrich? Yes. Mr. Shenigo? Yes. Move for adoption resolution of the Board of Commissioners for the purpose of executing payment of then and now certification. Okay. Second. Mr. Schaffner? Yes. Mr. Ulrich? Yes. Move for adoption resolution of Board of Commissioners for the purpose of authorizing payment to 
SSECO Incorporated for supplies provided to the engineer's office. Second. Mr. Shoster? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenegal? Yes. Move for adoption resolution, Board of Commissioners, for the purpose of entering into an agreement with Pogemeyer Design Group. Second. Mr. Shoster? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenegal? Yes. That's all I have. That's it. That's it. Okay, bid opening. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. We refer these to the engineer for review. Second. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Schachter? Yes. Mr. Shemp? Yes. So we have another one, right? We have two more. Two more. I have 951 on my phone. Is that okay? Yeah, it's 950. That's what that might be. Okay. Oh, they're not in here yet. Oh, we're waiting for the actual bills. Yes. Gotcha. So I got a, I went out yesterday to um, Meadow, Meadow, Lawn, Meadow Green Sanitarium. Over. Yeah, over Booger, yeah. And that's all flooding out there, which has never flooded before, they said. And he showed me a catch basin. He's got pictures with water two foot deep, all the way up to the top of the concrete light ballast. And he said the catch basin has no pipes in it. There's no pipes going out. Is that possible? It's a brand new catch basin that was just put in. He says no. The guy was there, and, and there's water right now that if you would drive out there, it's the one right by the entranceway, there's water that deep. And the field across is dry, but every uh, tombstone had water on top of it. It's like, and he said it's never been dry, wet before. Sure. There's stuff in there for sure. Can you send somebody out there and look at yeah, that? Yeah, we can have our highway crews go out and take a look. Okay. Yeah, do you have a contact name or anybody? I talked to Al Jenkins, <coughs> who I talked to. Um, I'll, I'll write down his number. Yeah, if you want to send an email, 
Or I'll just I'll give it to you on a piece of paper. Now. That's who called me. Bid opening Haver Road structure V105 replacement. First bid is from Downs Concrete, Long Channel Hall. Bid bond is included. Bid in the amount of $161,965.75. Bid in the amount of $161,965.75. Next bid is from NN Construction, Waitman, Ohio. Bond is included. Bid in the amount of $150,304.30. Bid in the amount of $150,304.30. Last bid is from Great Lakes Demolition Company, Victory, Ohio. Bond is included. Bid in the amount of $167,790.45. Bid in the amount of $167,790.45. Make a motion we turn these over to the engineer's office for a review. Second. Mr. Old. Yes. Mr. Shiner. Yes. Mr. Shiner. Yes. Are we waiting for the next file? And, um, I don't know if you heard him say that if they do come up with, they have them awarded, it won't be the Columbus Avenue.
Amazing. <laughs> Move to turn these over to the engineer for this over to the engineer for review. Second. Mr. Olf? Yes. Mr. Schalker? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. <coughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you. Did you get that number, Matt? You have to. You got it. Yep. All right. Yep. We have it. We'll take a look at it. Okay. Thanks. Good. Okay. Um, I gave you two different packets. The first one is the long sheet, as we call it, which is a summation of where we stand in the general fund as of right now. Um, the items that are in yellow are ones that you have not seen yet. We have met with them, so those numbers that are in there are preliminary, but you have not seen their detailed sheets yet. Um, I th everyone has been met with. I don't know if there's really much we want to discuss. We can go through the sheets that we have for you today. Um, right now we're looking at, just with the base preliminary, um, of 589000 left, but with all of the requests, including personnel, capital, and expenditures, we have a 1.1 negative for a balanced budget. So, questions, comments on the long sheet? All right, so if we go to the packet, the first one that we have is Clerk of Courts. This is the general fund piece for her. Um, the items that I have listed are within policy. Um, the requests are at the bottom of the sheet. One couple things to note, um, if you look at her budget for 19 compared to her budget in 20 for salaries and benefits, there's a pretty significant decrease in that. That is due to open enrollment as far as um, she had a lot of turnover in this department and the new people that came on are taking single versus family. I believe there were four that switched off of family onto single. So that's why you're going to see that huge drop there. Um, there is also a transfer that comes from title to fund two of the positions. Uh, the amount of that is 104609, which is less than it's been in previous years due also to that turnover. Uh, the new people that came in are not at the higher rates of pay as people who have been there for a long time, so that's why that number is a little less than usual. She is requesting an additional 1% increase for any of her, her employees that are over $15 an hour. Now that is on top of the 2% and 500 that we've approved in policy. So she's asking for an additional 1% for a total amount of $2,899. She's also requesting Wait, that... Stop. Yep. You mean... You, you don't mean over 15, you mean under 15. No, over 15. So there's another piece for people. She wants everyone to be at a 15 minimum. That's the second request. So she wants all of her employees to be at, at least at $15 an hour. The cost to do that is 9979 Anyone that is currently over $15 an hour, she wants to give them an additional 1%. Um, under her supplies, she has um, 
a projected increase in expenditures. I have reached out to her to get details on exactly what that is, but the amount is $2,400. Um, the reason when we were looking at this originally, she had $2,800 in her supplies from computers. So we have backed that out from her actuals. So, cause computers typically you're only gonna buy them once. So we backed that out and the amount that she was asking for was her actuals from 19. So that's where that difference is. Okay. Yeah. You're right on this then. If yeah. You don't get, have to buy the computer again. Yeah, and really, I mean, she should have got it, those through IT and not even been in the budget. I'm, I don't know the, the full story behind that because, I mean, you would think they would be paid out of ISB. Yeah. Especially mm -hmm. if it's in the general fund. But you're sure they were paid out of? There's a Dell marketing bill for $2,800. I don't know what else we would buy from Dell. I wonder if those are scanners. Potentially. Yeah. But still, to me, it's a one time expenditure, you know, regardless. So, um, more detail if, if needed coming on that. Also, um, she's requesting a, another $1,500 added to her travel um, for the Ohio Clerk of Courts Association Legislative Committee. I believe that Lou is on that. And so she is asking for that additional travel for that. Where's travel show up at? Uh, it's under supplies. Okay. And that's on top of what their current budget is. I don't have the sheet in front of me of what the, where they're at right now. But. I'm on the Ohio County Commissioner Association board. Doesn't cost me any money to go down there. What? Why does she? Why is this committee? Well, I had asked her what that fifteen hundred is for. Is it for hotel? Is it for your registration? You know what? What that yeah. is? I haven't heard back from her. But I. I mean, in all that's fairness, I just. That's what I'm asking. Because our right. meetings are free. Right. You just show up. Sure. And I give you donuts. In all fairness, I sent her that email yesterday. I haven't heard back, but I mean, we can get an answer on it. Because that was something that, you know, was to me, is this your registration to go to it? Or is this your hotel and, you know, whatever else associated with that? Yeah, that's what so, I'm curious about. Right. Okay. Understood. That's why I asked it ahead of time. I just haven't heard back yet. I was down there yesterday. I left <coughs> at 7. I was back here at 2 o'clock. I mean, I don't think that was like an incredibly unreasonable day. Okay. I don't know. Okay. Not okay. hard. <laughs> Roads are plowed. Well, not the first part, but anyway. Okay. Um, the last request is a service request. It is marked as in. That is for court view. Um, that is her portion of the cost share for that. Um, that contract, I believe, is already in place. So this is just to show that um, listed there for her piece. Questions on clerk of courts? Okay, moving to title, page two. Um, you're gonna see the same requests again. 1% increase for over 15, that's gonna total $959. And then a $15 an hour minimum for all employees for a total cost of $5,057. Um, she's also asking for and I put under the supply line, the three new computers that are obsolete for 3,376 total. Um, they're asking for an additional $2,000 for a travel increase. They did not attend conference previously as in prior years. So they're looking to do that this year um, with a cost of $2,000. And then she is also asking for an increase in her services line for a part-time scanner employee through FlexTemp. Total of $5,800 on that. Um, looking at her fund balance, um, at the end of 2019, it was 246207 There's about $4,000 of encumbrances when we look at alternate A, which is where the difference is there. Um, there was an increase in her revenue um, that we're projecting for 2020. There, um, I believe it was Tone that had increased some of the court costs, and she's going to be seeing the benefits of that. So we have increased her revenue on that. I thought that was all state derived. In other words, the state sets the prices on what she collects. Because your revenue for 18 is the same as your alternate A revenue. I mean, it's pretty comparable with your 17. Mm, that could just be carrying a whole lot of yeah, 19, it went down. It very well could be that that carried over. Mm. 
I have a note, and this is just my note, that said tone increased court costs for civil foreclosure and domestic on November 4th, and she will see a revenue increase because of that. I don't think so. Not okay, <coughs> that's what I, I noted. <coughs> not in title. Maybe in her general fund, but not in the title. No. Uh, that could be, uh, that would, that's yeah. fees set by the state, okay. isn't it? Let me take yeah, a look all the fees here number. that she's collecting under title are all set by the state of Ohio. Right. Okay. Let me take a look at that revenue number then. Yeah, I mean, right. last year it was 411. Yeah, it went down from. Right. From and so I, yeah, I don't want to leave it years. up there. Okay. How could it be the same? Well, that's what I'm thinking. I may have just carried that because, yeah, that's very ironic that's exactly the same. same so it could yeah. just be the way that I put in the formula, I just brought it over to the other side. It's very possible. Actually, that is. Yeah, I mean, I, I can see somewhere between the 19's actual and 17 and 18's actual. That'd be a fair number. Would this be titles on boats, cars, motorcycles? Yes, yes. Yeah. So yeah. it's possible because that number would fluctuate every oh, year. Oh, without a doubt, yeah. So I have a, a question. I was thinking about this the other day. I mean, we've been hearing that car sales are down overall. Sure, sure. I mean, so that would kind of, you know, could explain why the 19's number is less than those other years. I mean, she would think it would be projected as less this year unless they change the rate of charge. But I don't think, I don't remember seeing that. But uh, let me ask you a dumb question. And Pete, this is probably something only you would know. So I buy a car in Columbus. I pay the state tax here, the five and a half, because that's where my resident is. Mm -hmm. Right? That's but correct. the tax is collected in Columbus and sent on to the state. How do we know that we get our fee back. Is there a record that shows here's how many out of county sales happened and here's your piece of the pie? No. And same really on the sales tax. Well, that's part of the sales tax. I mean, you there's no way to tell any individual collector who it is. So in other words, we don't know if we Yeah, they have the they have sale. categories, you know. I mean, they do show you know, basically automobiles and, you know, like boats and that all lumped as, you know, as one number. But we can't see the specific no, piece. No, 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 we can't get no details. So my question would be is since the state always likes to audit us, does anybody ever audit the state to make sure we're getting our money? I highly doubt that. You mean on our behalf? On our behalf, no. yeah. Obviously, I mean, they probably get audited at a state level to see that maybe that's Doesn't that strike done, you as odd? How do we get our 1% back and how do we know we got it? Or if they just keep it? I mean, that's a pretty complicated issue when you start and then Amazon sales tax from across the country and cars and boats and all these transactions that happen around the United States that filter in at the tax rate. And then where do we get our check back? Mm -hmm. That's just me. Worries about that, I guess. Actually, to me, it's a fair question. But I doubt that we have the authority to have something like that done. Mm -hmm. Well, the same question is here I'm on sure the, the folks in Columbus would say that they're looking out for our best interests make all efforts to make sure we get what we're supposed to, but, yeah. but who knows. Okay. Number three. Sure. I'm going to defer this over to Ed, um, but you're not done with me yet. I come later in the packet, so. Prosecutors got a lot of um, personnel changes, um, and had shared some information with Kevin yesterday. And when he got back to me, 
I think my numbers that I'm showing you this morning are a little light. It's not a huge discrepancy, but it'll, I think it needs to be bumped up a little bit. Um, and quite honestly, almost his whole budget is his wages and fringes. Of course, we're getting into where we have the, uh, the contracts, you know, the 4E, the things with job and family services, which is affecting his costs, but there are revenues coming in to help offset those. The, um, i trying to think there was at least two resignations, a retirement, a person that they want to come back after they retire part-time in a few months, and some other staffing adjustments. Kind of an interesting exercise. Um, I think within a week or so, knock on wood, Hopefully, the tide will settle down a little bit. But and at this and at this number right here, that includes that new wage of the new person. I'm, I'm thinking it's about five-ish, a little light. But okay. I had put some extra in because I know that when there's vacancies next year, we're going to have the full. If everything stabilizes, we're going to have the full. So yeah. that helped offset some of it, but. Ed, mm -hmm. with this number you're showing for the salaries and benefits, does that include the old DRETEC allocation of staffing, like from last year? Yes, we went back. With what I sent Kevin, we went back. So when you look at the next page on page four, there's a nasty number there in the corner, lower right hand. And that's something I think we need to discuss with Kevin and maybe somebody else. Well, d didn't he already provide you what he wants to make the DRETEC allocation? Well, initially he was kind of like pushing that all towards the general fund. Right. And after we talked, I, I wanted him to see this number first. Okay. And if he wants to come to the podium, I suppose, at a future date and, and argue that, but I, I think pretty much because those positions have been paid out of DRETAC, they should stay in DRETAC. I, I think there might be a solution or two that hopefully we can uh, work out. Yeah, I mean, from you had, you had given me some earlier numbers, and I want to say it was roughly forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000. Yeah, it if was. If you had made an earlier allocation, mm -hmm. that that would be in the general fund and not right. in the DRETAC. Keep right. that fund solvent, if you will. When, when uh, Pete observed what Kevin was asking me to do. Um, he asked the question: If everybody stayed in place in 19 into 20, and we applied the percentage and the bonus and all that, what would be the cost? And um, our policy costs would have been greater than what Kevin was proposing, but it was the allocation that was creating the issue. He was basically, and I don't know if that was intentional or not on, on Kevin's part, but there wasn't as much being charged to DRETAC, so you didn't have that 30,000 negative, so. Right. And um, kind of jumping back to the general fund, mm -hmm. you got a note about the general fund revenue. Um, that 78802 in additional 4D and 4E contracts, is that from what we received last year? Well, last year when we did the budget, we noted that we were going to be starting that. It, it, yeah. it did not was not included, so I I noted at the end of 19 the, the, the grant funds were starting to flow. So and we knew that was going to yeah, it was going to be a lag. So I'm being presumptuous, I guess, that now that we're in the 20 and things have been up and running for a few months, we should uh -huh. pretty much have a full year. And so that's, that's something we need this, to. It should be from last year, yeah, from 19 to 20. It should go up that much. We should be picking it up for the. I would. I would think the full year. Okay. That's right. Something to double check with the grant people. Okay. JFS and all that. But I noticed that when we met with um, Jobs and Family Services, the disbursement on their side didn't start till the fall so yeah so it yeah. should knock on wood I don't see why it wouldn't but 
Yeah, we knew the 4D was going to going to be slow coming in. Yeah. Any other questions on the prosecutors? Uh, Judge Bennett's court, we met with him recently. Um, in the course of the discussion, his most important issue came out at the very end, and that's, I believe, the other gentlemen that were in attendance with me. He made it pretty clear that he, that was his number one issue, is adjusting compensation for his magistrate. That's the cost. We made it sound like it was going to happen whether we liked it or not. Um, there is another couple personnel issues that are listed. Um, last year, towards the end of the year, they had uh, a family medical leave situation where a person was not able to work and they asked for a, a temporary replacement. Um, that person is not back to work status yet. Could very well happen before we have to pass the budget, but at this point we're plugging that in again. And then they made a request to have that person, instead of being part-time, to become full-time. Um, there was a change last year in court view. Um, and Judge Bennett's court feels there was a shifting of the duties and responsibilities. What used to be, in part, outside attorneys had responsibility and then also the clerk of court's office had responsibilities that now those responsibilities are falling in the court's office. Uh, I did contact um, Judge Tone's office. They didn't feel that they were fully feeling the changes yet in their office, but I did ask them the question, but I believe Judge Bennett's staff and himself both were pretty adamant that this change pushed the work their way. So they're asking as another request to have another clerical person that would pick up that extra duty. Um, and then lastly, um, much like the clerk of courts, the, the dollars aren't exactly the same, but that added cost is part of the ongoing by virtue of that change in court view and court smart. Can you tell me what the change was that's created all this extra work? I believe there was a creation of a dashboard process. It was part I think of simplifying it. it. It the electronic filing all goes in now yeah, and there's no paper. Okay. Which is the goal. But then I think when it has to happen, like sit on the bench, sit whatever, they gotta have all that stuff. So they got to get all that stuff. And they got to find out how to get the stuff. That's oversimplification, I think. But well, if they go that's back to the, the old way. I'll say, well, we save but that's 10, the gist of dollars and well, go back to the old way. Of being I, I think we talked about does that make good economic sense to have duties and responsibilities that were either outside the county system or in the clerk of court's office Cause now to now be shifted up to the court's responsibility? It just. Mm -hmm. Doesn't sound like a, this a, where the a good strategy. Files everything from their office electronically. Is that what this is? I think that's the way it was, but then now they're saying it's it's in house and that the court has picked up that responsibility. That makes no sense. I, I agree. It's kind I of don't think it does either. What's happening? And I don't know if that's. I think a, that's a good business plan, at least. Right. At least I don't know if it just hasn't I'm, settled yet. Well, they should or come in and tell us about all this. Stuff. If this is a thing, I, I think that's. Yeah, that'll affect Judge McGuffey, Judge Tone. Right. And so I, I yeah, think as of on the surface, it sounds like what you're telling us is all this technology is help is causing us to hire more employees. I, I agree. That's what it sounds like. Yeah, and it doesn't sound like a, a good plan I'm to me. I'm sure Judge McGuffey's going to need an extra employee. I'm sure Judge Tone's going to need an extra employee. Yeah, when, when I contacted Beth in Judge Tone's office, she said it was still fairly new, the, the, the changes that they were experiencing, that she wanted to double check with some of the other people. She had not gotten back to me as of this morning. But I expect they will, they will let us know. So that's, I think it's a, an asterisk or something by it. It's, yeah. 
kind of a, a strange beast. Okay. All right, we're going to go to page six, which is facilities. No, you're fine. Page six, facilities. It's okay. I'm going to let you ponder before we move on. Um, okay, so looking at the budget for 2020, um, the items I have listed under the budget 2020 column are within policy. They do have a personnel request. Um, it's to essentially establish, it has to, it's due to their facilities. I don't know what his current title is, but looking at making him a facilities director, probably something for executive session. Um, I, I would assume, but the total on that is 7,326. Um, the supply request, it's probably gonna be easier if we look at page seven. So there's certain items that have been requested that are considered in my opinion and with the amount that they are, that they're more of a repair. So I've put those under the supplies and then broken them apart into two different categories. So if we wanna look at page seven, do you guys wanna go through this list? Well, I don't know if you want to go through this line by line. What's your pleasure, Donna? Mm -hmm. I mean, Gary should really maybe walk us through this. I mean, it's up to you. I mean, we could read through them and. Is some of them on this list considered that supplies like you were just talking yeah, about? Yeah, so anything that on that list, if you see, okay, the first, the first section is the building that it pertains to. So, say, services center. And if it says cap, that's mm -hmm. going to be in the capital. If it yeah. says repair, then it's going to be on, supplies. under the supplies. Well, I mean, first thing that jumps at me is if, if it's a possible state reimbursement, mm -hmm. we should know that we, we, sh we can't budget for the whole amount and then think we're going to get the revenue. Let's find out, are we getting reimbursed or are we not? Right, and what that be, percentage is, right. Yeah, what the percentage I think is. his point in doing that is just to let you know that there is the potential for it, but we don't know what that number is. Um, know that. Okay. Yeah, but, I mean, the ones under the jail, that's what we requested under the state capital you bill. Put mm -hmm. We put that in, but I mean, from the numbers, again, they asked the question statewide, what do you need for your jail? And I mean, the number came back in the billions of dollars from all the counties. And I'm sure the state is not going to fund that completely. So my, opi my opinion that we, I don't think we're going to see a dime of that money for the jail from the state. I think what they're asking for is a 10-year allocation of $100 million a year to meet the needs. <laughs> when, like I said, when the request is over a billion dollars. Yeah. Yeah. They just put a permanent, with of course no legislature can find the next one, but yeah. that's the way they're handling it. Yeah, I mean, one of the biggest ones was, you know, Cuyahoga County wanted a whole new just, you know, jail and justice well, heck center, yeah. and that was, <laughs> that was, yeah. It'll take the state, I think, five, six, seven years to hit that number. Sure. Yeah. So, I mean, the steeple's the steeple. I know about that. Mm -hmm. The monument sign you're doing, right? Right. That's the one that's out front, but there will be an insurance. I believe we're running that through the insurance, so there will be an offset on that. So why would yeah, I think we've already on? put it in the in the capital improvement fund. If I can throw it in. Yeah, I think, I, yeah, the checks. So like that part. So this is going to be paid out of capital. So keep in mind, this list, okay, down at the bottom, like way at the bottom, we break apart what's going to be paid out of the general fund and then what's going to be paid out of the capital fund. Keep in mind, when we're looking at this, we're looking at the cost. <coughs> yes, there's if there's a revenue offset, but on this sheet, we're not going to list that as a zero, even though we are getting revenue. We could list that, hey, we're, you know, this is 100% reimbursable. But we need to know that because in the end, Sure. If it's eight hundred and seven thousand, and we're getting three hundred thousand of it back, we're, we're going to, or even if we're potentially going to get it back, mm -hmm. so we're not going to do the parking lot at JGC if they, if the state says they're not going to pay their half. Sure. So, you know, kind of guess what you think you're going to get. Okay. Because eight hundred might be five hundred. Right. Right. And then we can decide from there. Okay. 
Um, all right, so that one's going to be. Carpet. I thought we already carpeted everything. Uh, which most of it's in the courthouse. I know, but I thought we did that for the last two years. We've been remodeling. Do you, you guys remember that? I we did. We did the next courtroom a while back. Mm -hmm. We just did the big courtroom last year. Yeah, this is most of this is the fourth floor. Gary told me this stuff is bad. But I thought he said he wouldn't add, I mean, I it really we needs to be, no, we haven't done anything up there. Anything? No, we haven't done anything up there. Well, we remodeled the courtroom and put all the, took the cork off the walls and on Delaware. Maybe that, Denver. but this is in the office area. Oh, okay. He said, yeah, these are where the clerks and that are at. Okay. I think it's high traffic area. And I know Judge Manette's is a small physical space. It's, it's like through a walking, through a door area because the yeah. carpet has popped up and it's a trip hazard and it's near the jury. I think it's near the jury room, but it's in the 4,300, I'm guessing that is to replace all of it because it seems like yeah. if that was just a little doorway, that's right. some pretty expensive carpet, you know, for that. Yeah. But um, so my, I think the intent there is to do the whole area and not just that one spot. This parking lot on the courthouse, mm -hmm. it says one, 1,663, but then next to it, what's those numbers? Okay, so the numbers that are in that column, those are the totals per building. Okay, so oh. when as you're looking down, I just gave you a total, um, and, I, and it's not at the very end of the courthouse because that's to be determined, so I don't have that in. So if you were to look at everything related to the courthouse, it's 239. I thought that might be helpful to know per yeah. building, you know, yeah. how much we're looking at. But there are some to be determined numbers there. Which Correct. Which I think... You know, could be fairly expensive. Right. Yes. When will we uh, when will we have numbers on those? Uh, I don't have a date, but I mean, I can find out from Gary when he will have the numbers and, you know, yeah, I think sure. he's actively trying to get quotes and stuff, but, you know, sometimes these contractors aren't very responsive. I don't know how you do second floor HVAC upgrades. What does that mean? This community spent a billion dollars modernizing that HVAC system. I remember reading about it in the paper. So what? At the courthouse? Yeah, when we had the architect and this was before oh, my time. Right. So what what do they mean upgrades? Is like the the controls, the individual controls between the dampers not working? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, again, these and those are, are probably things. conversations that Gary's had with who's requesting these. You know, with those, with our. In other words, they're not getting enough heating or sure, cooling yeah. in certain areas. Right. Yeah. But maybe the dampers are broken. I don't know. Yeah, could be. When we met with Judge Bennett, they did comment on the air conditioning was lacking. They didn't have a solution. They weren't proposing to put a window unit in. Yeah. That it wasn't working. They want to put a window unit in? I'm sorry? They, that's what their suggestion is? No. Oh, I thought that's what they didn't propose a suggestion. They said they, they just said it was Because a window unit would work. <coughs> I was down in Georgia at a courthouse, and they just opened up both doors on both ends of the building, about 80 degrees outside, about 80 degrees inside, but there was a nice cross breeze. And that was it. I think the judge had a window unit in his office. Yeah. <laughs> the rest we've of been told those of us that have windows that you're not allowed to open them. Right. So we could control. But we could put, if you're thinking window units, I like that idea. They're not real expensive and they yeah. give you good cooling. We're going to need to save money somewhere here. Mm -hmm. They have these new and improved pay the window increase units that don't actually <laughs> set fully in a window. Yeah. 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 That's a good idea. That is a good idea. Yeah. I'll, I'll talk to Gary on that. You get them now in the winter, too, if you can find them. Yeah. All right, well, let's fill in. You don't want to get them in the spring. No. Today and tomorrow will probably really be cheap. Okay, yeah, let's, we'll do that. Okay, page eight. This is the um, facilities jail portion. Um, not really a, a whole lot different 
here. There's same status quo. By services, oh services. The increase, are you talking about in the services line from their yeah, actuals? I think that's electricity. I believe that's the electric, electric. Well, they're really going from 2019 budget to 2020 budget and yeah. making it stay in the same, even though considering the fact that we spend less than that. Our, our concern is that building ain't getting no newer. <laughs> it's just right. getting older that, you know, it's just any day now, who knows what's going to go bad there, so. <coughs> it's all in the utilities. You know, it is. That, it's a very yeah. solid building. So We've had a lot of good luck with that. But the HVAC units are 25 years now, aren't they? That is true. Is that how old that thing is? Um, no, 30. 30 years. We opened it in, ni opened it in 90. When, when has the HVAC been replaced? Never? Never. Wow. Maybe some controls, but that's it. Are the... Um, they are not the hard, not the... Not the, um, <coughs> Unit yeah, not the yeah, not the units themselves or the air handlers or anything like that. No. Why don't you have Gary uh, get us an estimate from somebody mm -hmm. on what it's going to cost to replace that so we have it in the back of our mind? That could be, you know, million oh. dollars. Oh, I'm thinking absolutely. Yeah, we ought to think about that. It just proves might get us in line with the state. <coughs> Would get us closer to getting in line with a project like that some of their money yeah. mm -hmm. did you have to put that on the list if you wanted state money for it mm -hmm. yeah I have to say I think it wasn't on there yeah, we should have put that on the list, put that on the list. Yeah. Um, have we looked at changing on the light bulbs to these high efficiency LEDs um, not and not in a you know not nah, as a complete retrofit across every building, no. But what, what he is doing, and you know, they see some, I'm going back to his thing where he's changing these parking lot lights mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's really got to think about what the spending versus what the savings are. I'm sure he might be doing that. But we're to change, we're, that, that, that's what I was doing. So we have to change out all the light bulbs in our fluorescence. And the analogy is if you have to buy the balance like that, I think that's a fluorescent light. So if the balance goes bad, it's like 28 bucks. Yeah, they're a pain and, in the ass to change out. And it's, yeah. But so the logic is you the, the bulb, to replace that bulb with LED is $6.15 a piece. So if there's four bulbs, it's 24 bucks. The balance you can change the bulbs over, right? Here's the problem. There's spaghetti up in there, and you have to figure out which two wires to cut to eliminate the ballast to keep because the bulb will plug right back in. Uh-huh. But that's the mystery is how do you do that? That's what we can figure out. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean God with all the wires and the ballast too, yeah, I can yeah, see that. You know, you got all that spaghetti up there and there's two wires that have to be cut and then you have to connect those two wires back together or it don't work. Sure. And that's a mystery. But once you figure it out, we could have Mark, our electrician, just start doing that as part of his job, if you guys want. Yeah. I mean you like know. like out here in the parking lot, yeah. Those the I think that was six poles out there. Um, we spent a little around roughly about forty-five hundred dollars. That includes a lift, and um, I think we got like a six or seven hundred dollar rebate. And Gary said the electric savings payback is about three and a half years. Right. And where you really save, it's not even electricity. Where you save, you don't have to go up and change the bulbs. Mm -hmm. yeah. You don't have that labor to go up and fix them. Yep. That's where we make money on this, but we own an electrician. Yep. You know, I think if we just told him, we if you guys would front the money for the light bulbs, you know, six dollars and fifteen cents a bulb, he could just start doing it. Well, I think that's what we need to do is just plan on converting all of our buildings over to it. I mean, it's just you saving the light. Bulbs. I mean, I'd start with the oldest first, which means it'd be the courthouse. 
wherever. But well, you can teach more than Mark. I was going to say, I, I would think once you learn how to do it. Oh, yeah. It's sure. Not that, I mean, once you figure it out, it's just the time. Yeah, if you cut the wrong ones, well, you know that you got to switch them then. <laughs> but it's all, once you figure it out, it's all the same. Yeah. All right. Well, why don't we talk to Gary about that? Mm -hmm. as long, the, your only upfront cost would be the bulbs. You have to buy, yeah, you know, yeah. hundreds of bulbs. Sure. But in the end, I think it's worth looking at. Mm -hmm. It's worth doing. I don't even think it's worth looking at. I think it's just worth doing. Do and, and that's a project they can do as time as allows. As time allows. Yeah, it's not. If they have a slow time, time for whatever, they can all go to town. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, we just, you know, maybe allocate another say. Twenty grand a year for light bulbs. Yeah, yeah. You right. know, make sure they get yeah. through it. For but like four, but for four three four years or something. Like that. The yeah. So it's a no brainer, really. All right. And and I will tell Put you. Put that on as a list. Make yeah. sure he does it with GE American made bulbs. We've tried the mm -hmm. we've tried the other ones, the offshores. They don't last like they say they do. Not a not a Cree. Yeah, it's, it's up at 20,000 hours. It's like three months later. Oh, that didn't work. <laughs> it's guaranteed, but you have to send it back to China. <laughs> All right. Board of Elections. met several times with the Board of Elections this year. Um, a lot of times in the past it would be like a one and done, but um, I know they had some uh, concerns over cybersecurity and things coming up from a Columbus via the Secretary of State. But getting down to their basic budget, we typically would have looked at 2016 as a way to compare or 2020 had it been a, a normal election cycle and nothing's been normal with the Board of Elections for a while. Um, they've had a number of staff turnover. Um, a couple years back when we authorized bonuses, they gave out raises because they said it would be less expensive for them to do so because of the wage rates that were being paid at the time. Well, lo and behold, we knew eventually it would catch up and so that's that personnel request about the 2% rate increase versus the one-time payment. Um, Jen Furbach, their director, um, resigned and as has been somewhat traditional with the folks in that department, they end up with large comp time balances and then for whatever reason, they never seem to use them. Uh, their policy has not been to uh, pay it off annually. <coughs> so it, grows and there's a number added so that um, she will get paid because she left the Board of Elections. And by the way, she is out south these days. She what? Working for Judge Cam. Really? Mm-hmm. So those, you know, that's about, you know, $24,000, which well, I think they need to figure out how to deal with the 2% pay rate. I mean, mm -hmm. they made that decision. We give them 2% every year. Right. They make a decision. They made the wrong decision, and they knew it. In um, part, their vacancies turn over because they have I, I think they openings. <coughs> yeah. But I think they need to yeah. ease that and fix it themselves. Payouts, payout. Mm -hmm. um, well, that's, that's beyond what we realize in our policies. In other words, the essentially 200 hours. That we'll pay out out of our compensated absences fund or separate reserve. This is this is beyond that. Well, don't you owe it? They do, but whether we put it in their budget or not, it's a whole yeah. different story. Well, I'll leave that to you guys to sort out. The latter part of the summary 
deals with things that came up when we met with them and discussed their budget for 2020. They, they've had some, you know, funding and, and issues that they just, they were looking uh, at an early meeting, they were looking for the county, it actually was their suggestion, I think, to uh, Tim Jonovich that maybe he should just hire another person and that person's daily routine would be, you know, get their cup of coffee, walk into uh, Board of Elections, see any cyber hacking happen overnight or, you know, and if there wasn't, then he could, he or she could go off and deal with other issues for a day. And then the next day start all over again, but. But if all the issues are being taken care of now, and now you're gonna add another person, why would there be more issues for this person to do? Yeah. And what if there's no issues after he gets his cup of coffee? Right. At the Board of Elections, to, we're just gonna pay somebody 70 to 90,000 a mm -hmm. year with benefits. Just maybe we need them. Does that makes that's kind of where the, the bottom line comment came from consider a contractual support if they're needed they're needed if they're not then you don't pay them um, that doesn't sound like a real sure. another you know you know our suggestion was them to just go out and find a vendor to provide right. I said the same thing. in fact what I what I said is what they ought to do in if, if I was doing it I would go find I would talk to Ottawa County here and County of Sandusky County, our neighbors, and then they should all get together and they should hire a contractor that if you got a problem, you call them up, he comes over and we mm -hmm. split the cost. Now you're at least dividing a full-time quote unquote job by four or five. Into a contractor. Into a contractor. Because I told them, you know, because they said, well, why don't, you know, we, we do that. But, you know, we hire an employee, and I says, well, the issue with that is they have to be hired by one of those counties, you know. Yeah. No, you have and they're going to, gonna, you know, and they're going to kind of control that. I says, so that's, I says, that always becomes the issue, you know. It'll be, say, it's Ottawa County's employee, and they may not like having to travel over to here or oh, some other place, you know, and the other, that county that controls them says, well, we want you, want you here for the day. Well, my comment has been, I think they need to just hold off and let this shake out. Yeah, see what you happens. You know, there, there are, I always use Vinton County, but I can probably name 30 counties in Ohio that there's no possible way they have in their budget to hire a full-time IT person for the Board of Elections. So let's wait and see how this all shakes out with the state before we start expending a bunch of money. Mm -hmm. And if it is gonna cost us, we should just send a letter to the Secretary of State saying, we want to unplug the one computer in the Board of Elections office from the internet. You can email all your directives to Pete Daniel, he'll personally deliver them, and we will call you on election night with our results. And we'll drive him to Columbus. This is all for that. That would resolve all of this nonsense that the Secretary of State is putting on us. Mm -hmm. So I think we just need to hold off before we rush to comply with everything that's probably going to change 20 more times. We're already in compliance today. Let's let's give it a little time before we rush into mm -hmm. contracting or hiring. I see there was another thing you guys didn't put in here was they requested like between thirty and forty thousand dollars to do some upgrades to their offices. They said they got a handicap oh. access problem in the back. They wanted to put a secure like window thing across the front. Because uh, of all the money they get when we buy all our. <laughs> they can't even make change. Oh, I said because some because they're they're some of their uh, elections records, voter registration records are right there on the other side of the counter. Like and somebody can reach over and grab them. Well, move them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that would be that would be a no. So, um, should, you should listen to that here. I I botched it. That handicap accessibility assessment. Okay. It, it, oh, I see. Okay. I, I put expended, but it's, it's, they, not it's a request. Yeah. Yeah. That they, I believe they said that Jen had done an assessment, and yeah, there was a number of issues that they were concerned about. I'll, I'll amend that one. So that'll be a request. Oh, so the, and the one above it should have been not expended, but requested. So there's your forty grand. Yeah. 
Okay. Where's the 40 grand fee? Oh, it says, it says uh, under the 780,000 spent on a grant that we got for the new voting equipment and then the next two lines, Homeland Security Assessment and Handicap Accessibility Assessment. You get 10 grand and the word 30 expended grand. should not be. It says anything. expended, but yeah. they haven't been expended. They're requesting that. So that would show up where? As an alternate by contract service. We asked for a copy of the Homeland Security Assessment, but we've not been able to locate that. We wanted to see what they were even talking about. They've not provided that yet. Yeah, I thought that had more to do with their, their <coughs> computer security. Sorry, what was the question? I don't think there was a question. I think it's they need to change a few words. Just the numbers that they have on the sheet. So the go over this first of all, term pay over policy. What does that mean again? Term Ter means termination pay. Oh, that's for Jim. But or resignation pay or right. whatever. Yeah. yeah. And there's there's nothing we can do. That is what it is. But what's Pete saying, there is a policy that we do have, and that's the They've difference. exceeded it. Yeah. And basically, our policy says we're not funding it. But it is what it is. Well, I think the Board of Elections need this all stemmed from when they had a former board member who wouldn't let a Republican and a Dem two Republicans or two Democrats be alone in the board at any time. So they just build up. If, so if one person had to work, they had to have the person of the opposite party there. So they would build all of this ridiculous downtime. But that person's been removed by the Secretary of State uh, subsequently. And uh, so I'm hoping this gets better, but it sounds like we need to have a conversation with the Board of Elections to notify them that this is, this is not acceptable. And we can't just have, it goes back to like so many things. Maybe on some days you need to have two people come in at 8 a.m. and two people come in at new and they need to change shifts and you know it's this is not the acceptable way to manage an operation mm -hmm. you know that's just ridiculous and, and DOS is the same thing yeah people getting 40 hours a week of overtime maybe we just need to adjust shifts I mean that's the conversation I'd have with the board and I'll say something to Our friends on there. Turn the page. Look. Dog and kennel. Typically, they will look a little short in terms of being a balanced budget. The formulas that we use to calculate their wages and fringes typically are higher than what reality ends up being. Um, between on-call and overtime exposure, knock on wood more times than not, it's, it turns out to be less. In fact, up. last year, last year they, they started to use a uh, it's not even a full-time person that will cover their on-call as part of what they do. And I'm looking at your revenues, Ed. Yes. And the uh, actual was 282, mm -hmm. but you're doing 326, but then under over and eight was that's 282. Right. That's the, the original 2020 revenue estimate comes from a tax budget estimate. It would have been done like in June, July of 19. Okay. And it didn't turn out to be a good number, so we change it. So how's it go? I mean, look all the way across the 2017, right. 18, and 19. 17 was a, a refinancing of debt, so it was out of whack by normal. But if you look at the other ones, they're... Got a three in front of I know, I know. Huh? It's not good. 
I well, guess is the, there less dogs than in your town? Well, or? people that are paying tags and not getting caught, that those that aren't Yeah, paying. I mean, that's a lot of money there from yeah. 18 to 19. Well, we know that's how many, a lot of money. Mm -hmm. We know how many dogs there are. Was it 12,000 dogs, I think we remember? 14,000. Is the dogs, what, so can't we see how many dogs year to year? Mm -hmm. I think it's fairly consistent. The 2017 right? number was 288. Okay. The dog license was 288. I know we're showing there was some debt refinancing, so the number mm -hmm. on the sheet said 46. But was 18, 327, and 19, 347? 18 was 316. I'm sorry, we're pulling total revenues. Yeah, the totals are right. You can get that number, because I, I remember seeing a number, wasn't there one that she said no, because I looked at that number and the number was remarkably, I thought, close to the number of tags sold, and she's like, yeah, that. I don't think it's on our cover sheet here, but I thought it was in one of the papers that we had looking at. I'll look that up. The number of sale dog yeah, sales is down. People are buying tags. Less are buying tags than that, you know. Well, somebody ought to figure it out because if you're going to spend three hundred ten thousand dollars and you're only going to bring in two eighty two, that'd be a problem. But if you're going to bring in three twenty eight, then it's another story. It's not mm -hmm. a big budget, but you still want to know that going in, you think, wouldn't you? Otherwise, she's negative spending. Yeah, I think I. I mean, I talked to her a little bit, and I think her plan is to be a little more aggressive this year and going out and getting license or you know getting uh, violations <clears throat> get away from well, it I, and I, I mean, was there a change in like health insurance from 19 to 20 mm -hmm. oh there was mm -hmm. somebody went from like single to family oh okay yeah, it was HSA I believe uh, okay. so that was, it was like a single PPO to a family HSA so that's I mean it's that's 10. Why don't we figure out what the revenue is? Can't you look at the number of dogs? That's where the revenue comes from. And do you count the 8,000 in the revenue stream? I'm sorry? Do you count her donations in the revenue stream? She has a, a separate, of course, we, we know she has a sizable request coming your way. Yeah. Um, but, but do you use that, or does that stay separate from what's operating? It's uh, it's a separate fund. Separate, yeah. And yeah, she does have a donations fund. Yeah. You have a. I'm what's trying your? to find my packet. Should be in there somewhere. Yeah, I a couple days ago. I think she said she was like two or three thousand licenses down. That's two or three thousand dogs. I mean, what yeah. you define as a dog? The license. Are there less dogs? No, there's the same amount of dogs. They're just unlicensed. There's probably more dogs. <laughs> yeah, just not being licensed. You see what I'm saying? It's not like there's just less dogs in the county. There's just less people who buy a license. Yeah. Well, for twenty for twenty bucks, I guess I don't. That's why I don't want to go out and buy one. How do I know there's less? There aren't less dogs. You really don't know that. That's just. Your I mean, that would be a lot. That's but a lot. That's a dog like a yeah, coronavirus. That, it's probably like the uh, the elderly in Erie County. They're getting older. The dogs. Well, they they're, they're they, not making new dogs. They track that. I mean, they track the dog's age. In Erie County, they're not making new dogs. Do we have a senior dog population? Also, do you know? I'll check. I I don't think it's. I don't think the uh, homestead exemption comes into play with dog licenses or anything. Well, mine last year was. Probably between 10 and 15. You got 8,000 dogs that are 14 years old. That's your problem right there. Could be. Can you check on that for us? We'll, we'll get back with Barb on that. But I don't think. I, I, she would tell you it's not, it's not a, a, a doggy death problem. It's just no. that people aren't buying the license. A what? I think she, in our budget meeting she gave us the numbers. I don't. I don't have 
I, I can look those up because I do remember seeing those when I yeah, like she had given us the amount of dogs like you know over time and because it know, came in as a fee dogs. specifically on the line and I looked at that. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's the number of licenses sold. Yeah, it was a specific number, so you can track that, look at that, and see. Oh and yeah, it's down. I bought mine. All right. Well, look into it. After we met with the metals, um, we did share some different <coughs> overtime estimates and things like that. Uh, most of these numbers were their original as they prepared them. Um, they still have lots of people that tend to come and go and so turn over. I, I know they're trying to uh, stabilize their workforce. And well, the contract services number is way down. Mm -hmm. I thought. No, we, yeah, we thought it was going to be. That's their. Yeah, but you know, what is in that three million one forty four? What's what, what comprises that? I don't think it's all. Ther therapy, error mark. Utilities, our management company fee. Those are probably your your biggies. If you want to, yeah, you put that up there. What I'm asking is the the outside labor. Where's that at? Go under contract services. Would that be under professional? No. You're gonna see it in. There's a line. Your contract services. Yeah, no, no. You don't think that's all labor? No. This is where you hire agency costs. Right. So wouldn't there, shouldn't there be something here that says agency? You would think? Well, they, I'm sure, like when they do their Medicare and Medicaid reporting, they break this down into more. But the way they want it. Yeah. But as far as our budget, we just throw it all into one, essentially well, why one why account. Why don't, instead of us guessing, why don't, why don't you just ask the question, what was agency cost last year? What was agency cost this year? And then that'll determine the STNA wage increase that you're seeing here. Yeah, I, as far as I know, they have cut out those agencies. I think so too. Yeah. So, you know, the purpose was to eliminate the agency to pay the STNAs more money. Right. And you would see, and so you would see that account kind of drop, you right? Would think. You would think. But I have you know, a feeling it's kind of gotten replaced. Um, you know, the, the manager fee has gone up because they've done better, so we have to pay out more. Sure. So that's part of it. And I know, you know, Airmark is. Now that's that month's probably close to hundred grand a month. Mm -hmm. Are these all long-term contracts that we have in place for those different things, whether it's Airmark or is those as you go? You use, I mean, are we tied into anybody? Uh, Airmark, you know, that's months? like a two to three year contract, and we do so many years of extensions. Um, kind of the same thing with like the management piece, end of a contract piece. So this goes back to the revenue set again, but ten million two eighty seven was your actual revenue. So and let's not pay any attention to the nine million four forty five because that's the tax budget, right? There's four hundred thousand in there. They don't know what they're looking at. Yeah, so really we retired the debt. Yeah, I mean out of that ten million two eighty seven, four hundred thousand was to retire that debt. All right, so that takes you down to nine million eight. Which is still a million dollars higher than the previous year. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the story we want to tell is, yes, your expenses are stable, but your revenue is, you know, if you go, if you go that 
nine million eight, let's say that's where that number should be over there under alternate A. You know, you go back to revenue in 2007, it was eight million four. That's a you know one point four million dollar increase in revenue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now that, to me that sounds like real money. Yep. And this is only going to get better with the improvements that we're currently doing. Mm -hmm. We hope it gets better. Yeah, the the nine million six twenty seven is their is their estimate, so we didn't. It's population based, clearly. So, yeah, and the type, the mix. Well, your secret, your secret is. Medicaid, Medicare A and B. Mm -hmm. Those like numbers, if you look at, those get huge. Here's some history. This is where my writing. But if you look at like this Medicaid line right here, you can wow. see mm -hmm. 17, 18, that's budget, 19, and then that's where we at at 20. Yeah, I look at more, look at the drop in Medicare. That's what we should be working on. And I've been noticing that. You notice there's only seven, eight. When Lori was there, we had 12, 15. Medicare. I read that every week. Yeah, it's, it's not much. Well, I just don't want to recall it being that high. I yeah. sure wish it is, but. No, it was. Well, we built uh, one. Well, how many rooms did we do? In? Eight. Eight or, eight or ten. But we were keeping them at a double, double than using the singles. Mm -hmm. yeah, that, that, that's what that should happen. But we see a, facilities are going to see a big so. jump in hospice up. Huh? Hospice up comparatively. Yeah. In a big way. Well, you know why? We weren't getting our piece of the pie. Lori figured that out. Mm -hmm. That's what happened with hospice. We were basically giving them the room, and they were billing and giving us a few shekels back instead of getting what we were supposed to get back. So that got fixed. But yeah, we need to work. Well, this new improvement will help on Medicare. But still, it's still a success story. Well, and they're they're estimating an increase in private pay, which. I think we'd all be happy to see. So. But. Okay. All right. <coughs> well, we'll check with them on the agency. Um, should list some the capital piece in here. Oh, it's. I think it's a couple dryers. Mm. There's a few more things in there. These. But I think it's all, it's all pretty sure. much replacement <laughs> stuff. Oh. There you go. Yeah. There you go. There's one. Which we said, yeah, all these things need to need to happen. I think we've talked about all of that. I'm okay. That's our okay. pharmacy thing. What, explain to us what the, what do we spend per year in that? What, what was allocated and what was spent seems to be a big difference. You notice that? It's on drugs for the jail. And that is not reimbursable under Medicaid if they're under, if they're in the jail we have to pay for that. Yeah, this is in the jail. This is the nursing home. That's the nursing home. But is that's billable to Medicaid? Oh, yeah. I'm talking about the jail. You can't bill Medicaid. No. We just eat that. Isn't that what the mental health board is giving us money for? <clears throat> for the psychotropic piece. But that comes from the state. That's just a pass-through dollar, right? Right. 
Yeah, yeah it, it comes from the state. It doesn't come from a, the check actually comes from our mental health board, but it's because the state sends them the money first and they send it to us. And again, the state being inefficient in my words, why don't they just send it right to the county? I mean. Yeah, the, the chance of leakage might happen there. Yeah, certainly a possibility. We have these two bids in the engineer's office if you want to look at before we, if you have any thoughts or concerns or recommending what are they? award them. Of course, what we just opened. Oh, yeah. The two. Yes. Yeah, it's only two. So they're recommending to add an N. Motion to award the bid to Lindsay Concrete out of Canal Fulton for the concrete box culverts. Second. Mr. Schoenhardt? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Schoenhardt? Yes. And motion to award uh, bid to NNN &N Construction out of Wakeman, Ohio for the Haber Road structure. Second. Mr. Schoenhardt? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Schoenhardt? Yes. Motion to adjourn. Second. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Schoenberg? Yes. Which one's on the other side? Done.